Welcome to Denny's Bee Blog. We're down here in the courtyard in front of my barn. This is going to be Bee Blog number two. We're going to talk about history and a man called Langstroth. There is evidence that man has kept and managed bees for more than 4,000 years. Ancient Egyptian tombs show engravings of beekeepers utilizing hollow mud or clay cylinders as hives. Archaeologists have found evidence of 4,000-year-old beehives in ancient Israel. And the Greeks struck coins with images of honeybees on their surface. Approximately 2,000 years ago, woven baskets called skeps came into use as hives. They're still used in some places today. Colonial Americans used hollow sections of gum trees and clay pipes as well as skeps for hives. If you had x-ray vision and could see through a skep, you would see something that looks like this. This is natural honeycomb, but in order to harvest the honey, you must crush and remove the comb from its container, destroying the hive. The Reverend Lorenzo Lorraine Langstroth was born in Philadelphia in 1810. He wrote the first scientific and popular book on beekeeping, The Hive and the Honey Bee. On October 5, 1852, he was granted a patent on the first top-opening movable frame beehive, the system that we still use today, making him the father of American beekeeping. He died in 1895. Langstroth is widely credited with discovering the bee space. Although there is evidence that a Polish Catholic priest, Father Johann Churchan, was utilizing the bee space concept inside opening European hives at the same time, Churchan is considered the father of modern apiculture. He died in 1906. Apparently, these two pioneers made their discoveries independently of each other. These are my Langstroth hives from last year. Have you ever wondered what they look like inside? Let's take a look. It's early November and it's still pretty cold out here, but I thought I'd take a few minutes to show you how we put together a Langstroth hive. We'll go into more detail in the spring when it's warmer, but for now, here are the basics. We usually start by building a stand like this. This is just made out of pressure treated lumber and it keeps the hive a foot to a foot and a half off the ground. This has a couple of advantages. For one thing, when you're working the hive, it's better on your back. You're not leaning over as far. But the other reason, especially here in Lancaster County, is that we have skunks. And a skunk will scratch at the bottom of the hive to try to drive the bees out. And when they come out, the skunk will attack the bees. This next piece, is what Langstroth actually would call a hive stand. It's just a piece of lumber, about three inches high, with a bit of a slant on the front. It makes a little landing pad for the bees. On top of your hive stand goes your bottom board. There are several different styles and types of bottom boards available. I particularly like a screened bottom board. It's good for ventilation for the bees during the summer and um, also allows for any junk in the hive to fall through outside. This bottom board simply sits on top of the hive stand. There's no connections or screws. They simply stack together and are held on by gravity. And later on, the bees will glue everything together with what we call propolis. This is the bottom of the colony, and the bees will enter, fly in through here, and to go into the box. This particular type of screen bottom also comes with a piece of coreplast plastic, which can slide into the bottom of the screen to close it off. During the hot summer months, we would take this out so the hive is well ventilated. But in the winter months, we'd put it back in to close it up and give the bees as much protection from the winter winds as we can. Now the boxes that you see come in several different sizes. Most people are standardized on just two. This is a deep box. There are also medium boxes and there are shallow boxes. Boxes come configured to hold eight frames or 10 frames. We'll talk about that in a minute. 
the 10 frame box goes on top of the high stand like this and you'll notice these boxes are bottomless there's simply four sides the top however is rabbited to hold the frames this deep box will become our brood chamber this is where the bees will live this is where they will store their pollen and their store of honey and raise their brood, therefore brood box. Now what makes the whole Langstroth system work are frames. Langstroth frames are nothing more than a wooden frame with a bottom bar, a top bar, and two sides. And these frames sit in the rabbits in the box. Inside the frames, some beekeepers string wire and put natural honeycomb in here. I prefer to use the easier plastic foundation. Here's a piece of black plastic foundation. It has 3,350 little honeycomb cells already embossed along its side. These little cells, the bees will use as their base to build their honeycomb. The foundation is mounted inside the frame. Let me show you a few frames that the bees had drawn comb on last year. Here's an excellent example. You can see the original black plastic of the frame and the bees managed to partially build out their comb. This frame also has some wax moth damage. We'll talk about that. But you should be able to see how the comb has built up over the frame. When we put two frames together in the hive, we get a bee space. Once the comb is drawn out as it is here, there's just enough space for a bee to work each side of this frame. So here's your bee space. Here's a close-up of 10 frames in a Langstroth hive, making up the brood box. As you can see, there's just enough space consistently between each frame to allow the bees to enter and do their job. If there was more space than this, they'd fill all of it with honeycomb, and it would be impossible to remove a frame. In many cases, in an early spring, we'd stop here and put the cover on. But just so you know what's what, here's a medium-sized box. This box goes on top of the brood box, or you may have two brood boxes. This box holds medium-sized frames, and the medium-sized frames, again, are plastic, and again, the bees will draw out the honeycomb on this plastic but these frames are the ones that we would store our honey in, the honey that we harvest. The next component of a Langstroth hive is the inner cover. Again, this cover has a hole for ventilation and has a slot for ventilation, which generally goes in the rear. Throughout the summer, air can enter through the front, travel up through the frames and out through the back. And over top of the inner cover is an outer telescoping cover. This cover is covered on the top with some aluminum to make it as weatherproof as possible. And it telescopes over the edges of the box to make it as weatherproof as possible. You'll usually see a brick or a rock on top of these because nothing's worse than having the wind get underneath your cover, blow it off, 
expose and kill your bees. I've changed the camera angle to show you one more very important part of a Langstroth hive, and this is it. Simply a one inch square piece of wood known as an entrance reducer. This is the entrance to the hive. The bees will fly in, land here, then crawl into the hive with their loads of pollen and honey and nectar. Throughout the summer, we'd use the larger hole, which is about three, three and a half inches long, to allow for plenty of ventilation and lots of coming and going among the bees. If you've been following my bee blog, you know that last year I lost my hives due to an attack from yellow jackets. And the mistake I made was not to have gone from this size hole to this size hole. Had I done that, my bees would have been able to defend the entrance. But the yellow jackets overwhelmed them with the larger entrance and soon destroyed my hive and its honey. That's the basic of a Langstroth hive. I hope you've enjoyed it. We're going to go over a lot more later. A few things to remember. Telescoping top cover, inner cover, medium size super, honey super, large size super or brood box, entrance reducer, hive stand, bottom board. That's it. All the components of a Langstroth hive. Thanks for watching today. I really appreciate it. Please subscribe to the channel. Once the bees come in another month, it's going to really get interesting. And take the time to check the little box next to the subscribe button so that you get notified when I post new bee blogs. Thanks again for listening. Hope you had a good time.